Hello, church family. How are we? You can't answer that question. You can't answer how we're doing, uh, but that's okay. Maybe you can in the comments, and that would be awesome. Um, I am so excited that we get to hang out today. It is Wednesday, October 23rd. Today is actually my dad's birthday. I just realized that. Uh, it's week 42. Happy birthday, dad. Um, it's week 42 uh, of our Quest 52 uh, series where we talk about uh, Jesus. Uh, all year long we've been doing that. It's the 42nd week. Uh, we get 10 more weeks, 10 more weeks to talk about Jesus. Just kidding. We're going to talk about Jesus every day of our lives. Um, but this week we are specifically asking this prompt. When McKenna came up to me and she asked me uh, to record this video, uh, I said, okay, what's our prompt? And the prompt is also, if you see me looking down here, it's because I'm reading the prompts and using my cheat sheets. Anyways, back to it. The prompt today is Meditate on Romans six, uh, sorry, uh, Romans seven verse six, Second Corinthians five verse four, and Galatians five verse thirteen. And the question that we're asking is, can you be humble without self-sacrifice? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it really quickly. Um, I want to preface this with the notion or the understanding that I am 21 and I uh, am one of the youngest uh, people here. Uh, on staff at Connect. I'm, I don't know if I'm the youngest one that has done the video, uh, but I can confidently tell you that in my 21 years of living, um, I've learned a lot about humility and how to be humble, but I can also uh, with confidence tell you that I don't know everything about being humble and I don't know everything about humility. Uh, and that's why I'm so excited to jump into these three verses and just kind of meditate and talk about uh, at least one of them specifically uh, a little bit deeper and, and see what it has what the Bible has to say about humility and self-sacrifice. Uh, let's jump into the first one, Romans chapter 7, verse 6. It says this, Now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve uh, in a new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 5 says, For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as uh, your servants for Jesus' sake. In Galatians 5.13, which is where we're going to hang out for the majority of this video, it says this, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. And I just want to hone in on Galatians 5.13. And I want to first by start out saying, uh, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. We were called to be free. And I think that that is uh, so amazing and awesome. And uh, I actually just noticed a second ago before recording the video that uh, Romans chapter 7 verse 6 says, Now by dying to once, what once bound us, we have been released from the law, so that way we can serve in the new way of the Spirit. And that only comes by uh, way of Jesus, right? Jesus came into our lives and into the world to set us free. He said, you are no longer bound by the written code. You are no longer bound by the sins and the temptations that you've fallen into. You are no longer bound by that. You've been set free. You've been called to be free. You've been set apart as a holy people. You have been called free. And I know oftentimes when I am told this from pastors or mentors, they say, well, you are no longer, you're no longer bound by the sins that once uh, defined you. That's not what defines you anymore, but the love of Christ and what he did on the cross for you, that's what defines you. Man, there's so many times where I've been faced with the flesh in that moment. Because the next part of this verse says, do not be, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. And a lot of times with the freedom that I've been given because of Christ, I'm faced with two options, the wise option and the wrong option. And I remember growing up uh, in Sunday school, my mom would always teach me and all the kids, there's two choices we can make, right? One of them's the wise choice and one of them's the wrong choice. And she, every single time, she said, what choices do we make? And everyone, all the kids, some 20 of us would be like, the wise choice. And it was like, oh, it's fun. And it taught me from a very young age that there's a right way to do things and the wrong way to do things. And oftentimes, I think that when we are when we understand that we are called to be free, we're faced with these two options, the wise choice or the wrong choice. And a lot of times the wrong choice, which again is the flesh, is very tempting. And it looks like it can give us a lot of satisfaction and it looks like it can give us a lot of gratification. And maybe it does, maybe in the moment it does, but I guarantee you it's nothing compared to what the rest of the verse says. 
because I think that this part of the verse, do not be, do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. And then the second part of the verse, which is rather serve one another humbly in love, right? I think they go hand in hand. And I think if you replace uh, what you are tempted to uh, indulge in, right? The flesh, or if you replace the uh, the freedom, the, the choice that we want to make, the wrong choice uh, to indulge in the flesh with humbly serving people in love, which I think in this case is the wise choice, I think there is a level of satisfaction that you get out of serving one another humbly in love that is beyond the level of gratification or satisfaction that you get in just the momentary fleshy desires, right? Like there is a, a story that I have told maybe a couple of times to some people, maybe you know the story, maybe you don't, but um, it, it kind of goes like this. When I was a kid, I was about 10 and the, the Colorado floods had happened. Uh, and I remember listening to the story on the radio and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so devastated that all of these people will be losing their houses and all of, I remember distinctly remembering the, that the, all the animals would be hurt and I didn't want any of the dogs or the cats to be hurt. And like, I was 10, so, uh, it was really, uh, innocent. And I remember being like, I want to do something for them. And so I asked my mom and collectively as a, as a children's ministry, we raised about $1,200. And I'm not saying this to like toot my own horn, whoop de woo I'm saying this because in that moment, I think looking back at it and reflecting, I think it was a moment where I was like, man, I want to humbly serve these people in Colorado. I don't know anything about them. I don't know what they're going through. I've never been in a flood. I've never um, seen large amounts of rain to stop me from going to school or anything like that. Like I am, I am, I don't know anything about that, but I really wanted to help these people. And there was a level of satisfaction that I got when I received a letter from some of the people that we helped saying, thank you for helping us. And you're so awesome and doing all these and building me up, right? Like it was so sweet and encouraging to get those videos. And that level of satisfaction that I got was so amazing. And it, and it, supersedes anything else that I've really been able to be a part of when it comes to humbly serving people. I've, I've done things before in the past, but nothing comes quite close to receiving that level of satisfaction aside from Jesus himself. Like that moment for me is stapled into my brain forever. And I think that it teaches you something about making the wise choice and the wrong choice. And I think when we talk about, can you be humble without self-sacrifice? I think there is a level of humility that requires self-sacrifice. I don't think that it is humility or being humble uh, without self-sacrifice. So I think the answer here is, can you be humble without self-sacrifice? No, I, I don't really think that you can. I, I think it goes hand in hand. To intentionally be humble is to intentionally take yourself from this high and mighty position of, I can do this or I'm doing this or it's all on me to lowering yourself and building other people up. And it takes self-sacrifice to do that. In, in my case, in this story, it, what it did was all of a sudden it took time. It took effort. It took me knocking on people's doors when I didn't really want to do that. Um, I know it's hard to imagine. Maybe you know me, but I was a sh very shy kid. I didn't actually quite like walking up to strangers that I didn't know. And even now, sometimes when if I don't know them or if I'm in lar large crowds of people, I won't go out of my way to do that. But in this moment, and, and as I reflect back on the, the time that I did, it's like I had to do that. It was a self-sacrificing moment for me. And so I think when we serve one another humbly in love, with that comes with a little bit of sacrifice. I think there's a level of gratification, satisfaction that you get that far outweighs and far beats any level of satisfaction or gratification that you get from indulging into the flesh. And so I think that when we go from this place, when we are done with this video, we're going to pray here in just a second. I think uh, when we go out into the world, when we have the opportunity to make the wise decision or the wrong decision. Let's all collectively say together, what do we want to make? The wise decision. And I think sometimes to do that, we need to take a little bit of humility and uh, self-sacrifice. And I think that honestly, if you do that, there will be some level of gratification or satisfaction that you will get that will stick with you all these years later. Uh, and so I'm going to pray that over you. So if you are driving, don't close your eyes. But if you uh, are uh, not driving your way, you're watching this on your TV or on your phone, or you got a little minute, uh, bow your heads with me, close your eyes, and let's pray real quick. 
uh, dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for uh, just giving us the opportunity to talk about what it means to be humble and uh, how we can be uh, self-sacrificial in some of our own areas of life and, and in order to achieve a level of humility that's worthy and honorable to you. Lord, as we go from this place, I pray that you remind us that we are called to be free. And I pray that you remind us also to not abuse that freedom and to indulge in the flesh. But rather, I ask that you remind us and instill in us a, a longing for to serve one another humbly in love. And honestly, God, I pray that if you do that, there, that you would give us a level of gratification that, that supersedes anything else. That, that absolutely blows any other level of gratification or satisfaction out of the water because it's from you. And Lord, I just pray that uh, maybe you put Galatians 5.13 on our hearts this week as we uh, are uh, reminded of different ways and opportunities to be humble and to serve others humbly in love. Uh, Lord, we love you and we thank you for loving us first. And we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins that we might have the opportunity to serve one another humbly in love. So you're to pray. Amen. Lord, or, oh my gosh, I did this earlier today when we recorded a video. I didn't mean to call you Lord. I meant to call you guys. Hey friends, uh, I love you so, so very much. And I am so excited for uh, this week uh, and what the rest of this uh, Quest 52 weeks uh, has to offer for us. So until we meet again, uh, church, you are sent. Have a good day.